Hey folks, it's Maxi here. Welcome to another TW 2020 video. Hope you're doing well. We're here today for Shake It Up. It's going to be our draft show. So what we're going to have here is just a lot of kind of fun matches, a few championships on the line, with a few angles kind of saying oh, who's going where, etc, etc. And then at the end of the show, I'll run it down what I've done. Basically, each brand will roughly get 15 wrestlers uh, from the other two. There will be a lot more that will move, but it will be more so people that have not been allocated anything. Some of the new gens that have come through, the newly generated wrestlers, although most of them probably will start off at collision, but it's just to kind of freshen things up effectively. So we got some cool matches, some Dynamite versus Rampage kind of stuff as well, but most of it, as I say, leads to something going forward as we head on the road to Revolution. So sit back, relax and enjoy our show from Mexico at the Mexican Elite Dome, which I somehow created months ago. And yeah, we'll see how this show goes down. So take it easy, let's do it. So 150,000 have turned up at the Mexico Elite Dome. Not bad, it is a free show though, so we don't technically make any money. So I decided to start off here with um, a lot of our kind of authority figures and our managers just basically coming to the ring and discussing everything we're going to see the night. So you get the likes of Dwayne Johnson, Chris Jericho, Steve Austin, Mick Foley, you get CM Punk obviously the man over in Collision, and then managers Don Callis and Paul Heyman, of course Paul coming to the latter end of his career. And I just basically talk about you know how we're going to see a lot of people go to the different brands, and as I say it is going to shape and change things up. I'm hoping, I keep saying this every time, to get a lot more managers in, so obviously we've got Callis, we've got Heyman, but I've not really used too many of them, but there will be a few more coming. I want to start using the likes of Selena De La Renta, uh, and Alicia to it just as, as two examples, but hopefully it's something we can work on a lot more going forward. So they just introduce us to what we've got coming tonight. A 75, which is a shame. Callus underwhelming, Heyman gets stale. Hopefully we can start getting Don Callis over. So I went straight in to a matchup here, some superb wrestling and good heat. Representing Dynamite, we had El Hijo Del Vikingo and representing Rampage with Swerve Strickland. And Swerve picked up the win in 1528 with the Swerve Stomp, continuing his great run of forum. I made this match steal the show, I thought it would be phenomenal, but sadly today just an 83 rating, despite the 90 and 85 rated performances, there was a lack of psychology, which unfortunately took a few points from the matchup, but good win there. After the match, we have some words from Swerve, obviously accompanied by his manager, Prince Nana, and he said he was informed by Dwayne Johnson as he came to the ring. He is the first man that is going to be moving, and it is going to be whose house, Swerve's house, over on Dynamite. He will make the move. And he says, I think it's time he start going for that main championship, so we'll see who wins that main event tonight, because maybe Swerve Strickland will have an interest in that. 78. We then had the matchup for the Queen of AEW Championship, and this is only the second time these two have been battled each other in AEW. I think they've got about 30 different matches through the various Joshua promotions, but only the second time here, the first time in two years. And it was about they had superb wrestling and good heat as Takuma Aroha defeated Konami in 1735 by submission with a triangle choke, giving Takuma Aroha her first defence of the Queen of AEW Championship. A great Championship always producing, as I say, stars. 86 rating is fantastic. Takuma will carry it with great technical ability and great psychology. And Konami, a very good all-rounder. And I say, to get a rating like that, with Konami off her game, is certainly something I'm delighted with. We then get a little hype package here. This is confirming that three women will be moving to Collision. And those will be Ruby Soho, Tegan Knox, and Danny Luna. Danny Luna will of course be joined by Mark Andrews and someone else who will be debuting at a future point. I think you know who that is, and that was a 44. We then had the Zero X Championship on the line. Blake Christian defended against El Fantasmo and Lee Moriarty, and he would about to have some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd as Lee Moriarty picked up the win over Blake Christian and El Fantasmo in 13-10 when he pinned Blake Christian with the Tiger Driver 18 meaning we have a new champ, and that is Lee Moriarty. Uh, Blake Christian carried the matchup with an 87 rated performance, 70s, mid-70s I'd say for Phantasmo and Moriarty, and a 78 overall. And after this matchup, we hear from CM Punk, the man over in Collision, 
and he has announced that not only is Lee Moriarty now a collider, but he also will be the Zero X Championship. It will be the highlight of high flying action. So 75 there from CM Punk, so you've got Lee Moriarty over there, but don't worry, if you're losing track, I'm going to round it up at the end of the show. We then had the Trios Championship on the line. Here we had the matchup that had superb wrestling and good heat as the Elite defeated Jack Perry in top flight in 1330 when Kenny pinned Jack Perry with a one-winged angel. It gives Kenny and the Bucks their third defence of the Trios Championship. You can see there are some good performances, the weakest there from Darius Martin with the 78. An 86 overall, and as I say, it is a crying shame when we scroll all the way down here that Nick, Matt and Kenny have a declining physical ability. However, Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out and he says that including El Phantasm on top of this, but Jay White, Kenny Omega, the Bucks, Juice Robinson, Cody Rhodes, Prince David, all of Bullet Club Elite are moving to Rampage. The full stable is going and Austin says that's the bottom line because Steve Austin said so. So 90 rated segment, that will help us a little bit in that regard. But I feel like it keeps them all together. It freshens up a lot about the fight, and I needed more star power on Rampage, and I felt like if we get Jay White over, Kenny can come over. Cody still has a high level of overness, despite maybe not the te technical attributes, and uh, the box can add a bit more depth to my tag division there, so perfect. We had a decent match up here, the AEW Women's Champion, the newly crowned of course, that is the, the winner, the one that defeated Veronica for the streak. Elena Black teamed with obviously her partner, Saraya, who's back with her. And they took on Covet, who are from Collision, so that's of course Kylan King and Taylor Wilde. That was a win in 9.46, Elena Black pinning Taylor Wilde with a double underhook DDT. A 73, and just a good matchup getting the, the new champ, a good victory on a big stage, pretty much. And after it though, the Vahiti confrontation by someone that's moving over to Dynamite. And it is more than a woman, it is Chris Statlander, but she stares down Elena Black with key intentions that she is going for the AEW Women's Championship. And that was an 85 with Stat looking good. Next up, we had a good match up here as Parker Bordeaux from Collision defeated Dynamite's Ortiz in 829 by submission, refusing to let the hold go, which was an 80 rated segment. And this resulted in Eddie Kingston coming down to chase off Parker Bordeaux and saving Ortiz from a serious beatdown. As a 79, just to confirm out of this one, because there isn't really an angle, but words describing it, that basically Ortiz is on Dynamite. Eddie will be basically going into a tag team with Ortiz, so it'll be Eddie Kingston and Ortiz. So Eddie moves back to Dynamite, of course the Bullet Club etc are moved away. And Parker Bordeaux will also be moving to Dynamite alongside his manager, Don Callis. We had a little just nice tag match here, good wrestling, decent reaction from the crowd. The Lucha Bros, Ray Phoenix and Penta, defeat Dox and Tez Ford in 12-15 when Ray Phoenix pinned Dox with an assisted fear factor. A 77 here, great performance there from the Lucha Bros and a 77, pretty Decent stuff. And we get a promo from the acclaimed Matt Caster and Anthony Bowen saying that was quite impressive by the Lucha Bros. And they would just and love to announce to the TW universe that the acclaimed are back on Dynamite. They're moving from Collision because everybody loves the acclaimed. 77. Apparently they're still doing the same gimmick in five years' time. Next up, obviously, with the whole thing that's transpired, Roxy Perez obviously now turned against the likes of Mercedes Monet, Trinity Star, Liviana Morgan, and Marvelous Maddie. She teams up today with Veronica to battle the two uh, the tag team of that faction. And it's a win in 801, Roxy pinning Marvelous Maddie. I feel like in this kind of situation, it's a great opportunity for they hopefully both tune the skills of Roxy and Veronica because they are going to be the, the core of our women's division going forward. So Veronica off her game but she's getting back to winning ways after the defeat to Elena Black and a 67. Obviously I don't need to protect her as much now. We can allow our skills to develop. Now a little backstage segment here. As I say The Rock Dwayne Johnson is with Hangman and Adam Cole. As I say they are ready to take on in trios action 
the former Shield, obviously John Moxley, Tyler Black and Roman Anai. And Dwayne has said, you will be joined by the newest member of Dynamite that will be in your team. Someone that's had a little bit of a run-in with Roman Anai before, and that is Ricky Starks. So Ricky says, I am ready, this is my time to shine. It's time for the revolution to be televised, etc. 84 segment, and the matchup itself. Superb matchup, Roman Anoy and Mox and Tyler Black defeat Hangman, Cole and Starks. In 1749 when Roman pinned Ricky with a spear. Ricky with a weak link there with a 61, he was rusty though. So it was his first time back after a long suspension, I was trying to thrust him back in. But sadly, just an 83 there, great performances from Roman, Hangman was up there as well, and Mox with the 93. But yeah, that feud will continue on. As I say, there is one man that will probably replace Ricky Starks for a, a big matchup at the pay-per-view should be obvious who that is but we'll see when we get there and we get ready for our main event it's going to be a six-way match for the AW World Championship Santana says the odds are against him you know he won the title at the top ladder match he cashed in when he wanted he's going to show he's going to be the man that carries the company into the next stage of its inception that was a 79 Match of itself was a 94, but naturally, as you can imagine, it was for a, a title change. But it was an exceptional match up here. We had various wrestlers from various brands competing in here, as was highlighted at one of the prior events. And it was Will Ospreay who defeated Kurosuke Takeshita, Kazuchika Okada, Darby Allen, Santana and Walter in 21.36 when Will Ospreay pinned Darby with a 6.30 splash. Meaning that coming out of the pay-per-view, Will Ospreay wins the AEW World Championship. So, a 94... I think you can see there the fact that it says Santana was a weak link maybe gives you an idea. I didn't feel like he was as over as I'd have liked. I couldn't get him to kind of burst his pop cap. Even we tried to get him to bulk up, it wasn't really happening. Takeshita carried him at the last event, but it was always going to be a small reign. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Santana and IRL. It's just the case of, uh, yeah, the game messed them over. But Osprey gives us a lot more fresh shoots going forward. I think I've got a rough idea the matchup I would like to have at the event. And I'm hoping everything syncs up right because it's probably been about a month since I booked the last pay-per-view and I was holding off booking this for ages and ages before I decided we, who was going well. So if anything's out of sync to the last event, my bad. And I finish it with Posprey celebrating. So I finished the show. 99. Wow, that was a good recovery. Uh, the main event obviously delivered. Best promo was a 90, so maybe if we could have a better promo, we'd have been up there. And of course, when you get all the boosts, it's a good opportunity to, to really get your, your show over. But you can see, we're going to go into this new era with a new world champion. That is going to be Will Ospreay. We're going to go in with, as I say, a championship moving brand. And I'm just going to confirm, there's a lot of people here that are free agents. Like, they aren't on any brand they've never been. I've just booked them here, they're everywhere. They all get allocated to various brands. We'll also have people like uh, people coming up from Impact that have been maybe generated. They'll get allocated to brands. Uh, and I'll assign them pictures and we'll, we'll start pushing those kind of talents as well. Because we really do need to start looking at the future now that we're five years in. But just confirm. Uh, so the people that have been drafted. Dynamite, we'll see, Swerve Strickland. Soraya. They're going to get Jade as well, which is uh, one of the young English wrestlers who's real. Uh, and she is going to join the stable with Elena Black and Soraya. Just makes sense. Uh, Julia will be moving to Dynamite. Uh, I should probably mention the show, but Roman's obviously going to go so he can team with Tyler Black and John Moxley. I think that makes perfect sense. And it'll keep him away from MGF at one point. Uh, Chris Statlander's obviously moved. Ricky Starks. We're also going to see Thunder Rosa and Holly Dead will move to Dynamite as well. Uh, Anthony Bones and Max Caster. And they're also going to get Parker Bordeaux with Don Callis and Eddie Kingston. So these were all mentioned on the show. And also moving over will be Ace Austin. And Hook. Collision, Danny Luna and Mark Andrews. And when he eventually is able to join, it will be Flash Morgan Webster. They're also going to get Tommaso Ciampa, Jordan Gresham. Uh, sorry, Jordan Gresham. Jordan Grace, hence the confusion. Keith Lee is going to be a collider. We're going to see Io Shirai, Bandido, Ruby Soho, El Hijo Vel Vel Vikingo, Austin Fieri, Richard Holiday, Brandy Alon, Lee Moriarty, and of course the championship belt alongside him. Uh, Tegan Knox and Mark Quinn. And last but not least, moving over to Rampage, we're going to see Switchblade, Jay White, we're going to see Just Robinson, Nick Jackson, Matt Jackson, Cody Rhodes, Prince Devitt, Kenny Omega, El Phantasmo, 
We're going to do a big shop reveal on one of the normal TV shows that Okada is going to go over as well. And we're also going to see the likes of Prezella Kelly, Andrade El Idolo, so they're going to split up LFI. But, uh, Otis is going to go, and I might actually do something with him. Uh, moving from Collision, we're going to see the Motorcycle Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. Uh, to go with Andrade, because they are together in the game as a couple, we're going to have Penelope Fob. And also moving over is going to be the Spanish god, Sammy Guevara. So a lot of stuff freshen it up. A lot of stuff will move on towards Revolution, and it really gives a new chance to kick on going into the summer months. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully now I can get a wee run of shows together into Revolution and get a bit of momentum back, because I say, uh, when I've recorded this, I had a lot of stuff on the last couple of weeks, so I've not played as much TW as I would have liked, so sometimes I can drift away from ideas that I have in my head. Just one of those things. But we're back on the road. As I say, I'll get a good code book in here. Uh, for episodes that will probably take me to the end of the year. Then I'll take a wee break. Every way back day to evening, I'm going to play Football Manager for a couple of months. So, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know how your saves are going, who's still playing TW, uh, who's moving up to PWS. I keep loading it up, but I just, I don't know, I just kind of seem to get a proper save. I think it's because I've done this for so long that I just find it difficult to get another save because I'm booking so many shows here, and obviously, time is a wonderful thing. But, as always, thanks for the support. It's much appreciated. Take it easy, and hopefully I'll see you next time, next week, for AEW Revolution 2028. See you later. Bye-bye.